Hey folks, welcome. This is Art Wolf. This is another unboxing video from a product from Columbia Games. So, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did an unboxing video of this guy, the Harn Regional Module from Columbia Games. This is a 1983 product. Go check out that video if you would like to see the contents of this box. So, what we have today is actually the current Harn World module, um, which you can get this in PDF or in uh, or in a print edition. Um, if you get the print edition, it comes in this binder, uh, which is, you know, pretty standard binder, but it's nice uh, with hard world inserts and stuff like that. So I actually have not looked at this particular version of the Harn core product before. So if you're interested in, if you don't know what Harn is, um, it is a... Um, let's say, non-system specific fantasy world um, developed by Columbia Games starting in, or, and published starting in the early 80s um, from Columbia Games, currently published by Columbia still and also by Celestia Publications, which is a web-based PDF publisher. So you can check that out as well. I will have a link to both places in the notes below. So let's take a look at what we get in here. And again, like I said, I have not seen the contents of this particular edition. There are a couple of editions in between the one I've already unboxed and this one, and I might do another video on those, so we'll see what happens. So obviously you got a binder. Um, you have, uh, looks like a little Harn catalog. And this is something I haven't seen, at least not in a while. Uh, this picture of Harn World here is actually one of the older editions. Um, and it talks a little bit about uh, gives you a little bit of info about cities, in this case the city of Tashal in the Kingdom of Kaldor, and a castle in Mulderin, um, and some additional module stuff. So I would consider this like a sort of catalog, it's kind of what it looks like, but um, not much catalog in it. Um, so let's put that aside for now. We have another copy of the Harn Regional Map. I'm not going to break this out in this video because I did that in the last video. If you want to see the, that map, um, I get pretty close to it in that video so check that out it is an amazingly good map um, so I have so it's interesting that they don't um, just put the product in the binder that's actually good because otherwise it would probably get wrecked in shipping so they actually put it in this little folder so let's see what we have here so so far we've got a map and the actual Harn core material, which I'm having difficulty unbagging. There we go. All right, so. Uh, Harn Master Module. Uh, N. Robin Crosby, who was the original um, creator of Harn, who is no longer with us, unfortunately, passed away quite prematurely a few years ago. Um, additional writing by um, Tom, Tom Doglish and Edwin King. Um, not sure what Edwin King's up to, but I know Tom is still with um, Columbia Games. Um, so, illustrations by Eric Hotz, a lot of this uh, sort of, um, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a particular, uh, the, uh, the carved wooden blocks, and you stamp it on the, on the, the medium. Uh, for some reason, the actual term for that is eluding me at this time. Okay, so we have here an introduction. Um, what is Harnworld? Um, what is Encyclopedia Harnica? That's a little bit beyond the scope of this article, but maybe we'll talk about that in a, in a future video. Uh, basically, Encyclopedia Harnica is all the other materials for Harn, which are organized in this article-based format. Um, here's the thing about how to, why to use Harnworld, which is actually super interesting. I'm going to have to look at that more closely, but not right now. So we have... Uh, and I'm not sure how much of this I've mentioned. I know I mentioned it in the blog post. I will put a link to that in the notes below as well. Um, about this article-based structure that Harn products are published in. Um, I find it very interesting. Um, nobody else in role-playing has really managed to pull this off. Um, but we have a, an article for Harn. So this is kind of the Harn Regions Master article. Uh, we talk about some cultures. Uh, what are communications, uh, the status of communications, the, the general geography, that kind of stuff. Uh, on the back side we have a map, which is a colorized version of the old map, which basically shows the major cultural and political groups. Um, in dark blue you have the so, quote-unquote civilized kingdoms. Um, you have some Ivashu up here. Those are the creations of the mad creator god Il, uh, Ilvir, who lives on the island, al allegedly. Um, and the Ilmay down here, they were mentioned last time as well. Of course, the uh, demi-human kingdoms of Ivale, where the elves live, and Azadmir, where the dwarves live. 
um, that is very similar to another map there. And this is, is see, so like I said, I'm, I haven't seen this before. So you actually get like a breakdown of Azadmir here. Um, gives you some some demographic data, where this is the largest town, what it exports, what the religion is. Um, there are some humans in um, Azadmir as well. And it actually tells you what the related products are uh, that you can pick up if you want to know more about this particular place. Uh, let me make sure I'm getting everything in frame here. Um, Kybissa is like a little tiny kingdom. There's basically a, a very nice castle and two or three little keeps. Um, it is a place that is constantly on the precipice of being occupied by somebody more powerful. Um, Vale is the Elven Kingdom. Um, here's the Kingdom of Kaldor. I'll be talking more about the Kingdom of Kaldor in a future video. For a lot of folks, it seems to be the default place to start a campaign in Harn. Um, it actually is not my preference for that, uh, but it is very well developed. It's possibly the most well developed of the various kingdoms. Um, the Kingdom of Kande, which very superficially looks like the good guy kingdom. Um, over here we have the Kingdom of Meldarine. Uh, this is according to folklore, the wizard's kingdom. It's not actually run by wizards, but maybe it is. Um, that's something that we might get into later. Um, Orball is an interesting situation. So we have a, a an analog to the Vikings. They actually don't map 100% um, to historical Vikings, um, but the Evinians uh, have been conducting raids on Harn and other places for a while, and Orball is where they have actually kind of moved in and set up a kingdom. Um, uh, under which the local Jaren population is very restless, and they have rebelled at least a couple of times. Uh, those rebellions have been ruthlessly put down. Um, it's actually a really interesting place. If you want to get into the Avinians without actually going to Avinia, there is material on Avinia. We'll see if we can do some with that later. Uh, here we have, here uh, along these two countries, along with Kande, are kind of my personal preference to, to run campaigns in Harn. The region is called Tharda. It is three civilized kingdoms. Kande, which we saw before. Uh, Rathim, some people pronounce it Rethim. Uh, I say Rathim because I think it sounds better. Um, and the Thardic Republic. Um, this is... Uh, it, it, this is a, kind of a whole can of worms here, but but like I mentioned before, uh, to some extent, Kande is kind of a kingdom of good guys, where Rathim is kind of a kingdom of bad guys. Um, it is not quite that simple. Um, in, in a sense, Tharda is the most civilized part of Harn, um, because for a couple of reasons. For one, there's actual actual paved roads there built by the Karani Imperium. Um, this area is where Harn's largest city, the city of Koronan, is. And by like modern standards, or real, really even like Forgotten Realm standards, it's a relatively small city. But by Harn standards, it's quite large. Um, and this is the only place on Harn where civilized states actually abut one another and have borders. Uh, Kaldor is kind of out in the wilderness at a at a, a major river um, crossing and where a couple of different trade routes meet. So it's a pretty big city, um, the city of Tashal, which is the largest settlement in Kaldor. Um, but the borders of Kaldor just kind of fade out into the wilderness, um, whereas the, the three nations of the Thardic Republic, Rathim and Kande, all share borders and they fought wars. And I think it's pretty interesting history. Um, here we have... Uh, a page on the various tribal nations. Uh, there are, again, quote-unquote, barbarians on Harn. These are the various barbarian, uh, not tribes, but tribal nations. They are made up of tribes in most cases. Um, the Gargoon, who are s s sort of an, in, in, an imported race, um, they are the orcs of Harn, um, and you can certainly run them that way. You can just run them as orcs if you want. Um, but if you actually get the book, on the Gargoon. They are uh, an imported race of extra-dimensional critters that have a pretty unique life cycle and racial memory and some interesting things going on. Um, we have uh, little sp snippets on the Ilme, the Mere Dragons, and the Avashu, who I've already mentioned. Um, we have an article on feudalism. Um, this is one of those things where it's kind of got to be here, um, but I've kind of seen it a lot, uh, considering that most of the feudal stuff is reprinted in a couple of different places at this point. Um, this is basic information about how feudalism works on Harn. There are typically a royal bureaucracy, but it's a it's a feudal bureaucracy. It's not like the, you know, the bureaucracy of the Roman or Chinese empires, which were incidentally quite different. Um, let's talk about shires and royal forests and 
forest hundreds. Uh, the basic uh, manorial lifestyle is kind of talked about here. There's a module on manners and how to run manners, if you're interested in that. Um, you could easily run a campaign just based on that. Um, here is a little breakdown of towns and cities. So here's, as you can see, the uh, the most populous city of 12,500. Sounds real small, but it's at, for by medieval standards, it's a pretty big place. Um, uh, it's located in the Thardic Republic, and it is the biggest settlement on Harn, the smallest of the cities. And by the way, how we define cities here is that they are walled towns. Um, there's no actual like bottom cap for population. Um, so these, these cities all have city walls, and usually there's a citadel of some kind as well. Um, it talks about um, how towns are run, urban geography. Um, a lot of this material looks new, actually. I don't recall having seen some of this before, at least not organized in this way. Um, there are guilds uh, of various tradecrafter professions in Harn. Um, these are their badges. Um, of particular interest are the Pilots Guild. Um, these are the, this is the guild of people who do navigation on ships, and they're pretty important because they're kind of critical to trade. Um, also of note is the Guild of Arcane Lore, which is another whole can of worms we might talk about later, but yes, there is a Guild of Arcane Lore. Yes, there are wizards in that guild. Um, and what are the other sort of esoteric ones? Um, the Salters Guild is very important because they provide salt, which is critical. Um, there's a Litigants Guild for lawyers or barristers or whatever you want to call them. Um, what else do we have here? Did I skip a page? Nope. Uh, so here we talk a little bit more about guilds, where the, you have the, the discussions of apprentices and journeymen and how to rise in the ranks and stuff like that. What happens when you're not in a guild? Um, there's a whole economic system tied to Harn as well. Um, it is based around a silver penny. Um, gold coins are quite rare on Harn. Uh, the only uh, nation on the island itself that actually mints gold coins is Azadmir, the Dwarven Kingdom. Um, otherwise, you're going to get silver coins or silver coins chopped up, as was um, the practice in actual history as well. Uh, and here we have a big price list, uh, which is relatively thorough, I think. Um, and uh, another, uh, continuing with the economic discussion, we have, uh, you know, what you can expect as income if you are a member of one of these professions. This is actually more useful than you might think. Um, if you're running a game in Harn, um, you have probably no need to look up how much a locksmith makes. Uh, but it might be useful um, as a gauge of standard incomes so that you can adjust the uh, the influx of uh, money to your adventuring party. Um, here's a little thing on taxes and tolls. Possibly will be important uh, in a campaign. This is a map of trade goods. Again, we saw this in the old one too in a black and white version. Um, here's a little part on trade and maritime trade. Um, here is a thing on the religions of Harn. So I've talked about this a little bit. There are ten main gods um, on Kith worshipped on Kithira. Uh, but if you look at some of the uh, additional materials, that gets a little vague in places because there are some other gods that might be just different versions of so some of the other gods. And you have a family of worlds. This also is something that I think is beyond the scope of this video. Um, you can, these are different worlds or planes that can be traveled between in Harn. Um, so those who, uh, you know, say with some justification that Harn is a low magic world, um, that's true, but there are mechanisms in, in the world that let you bring in uh, higher fantasy stuff. Um, here's some more religion stuff, a little bit of the basic cosmology. This is developed in more detail elsewhere. Here are short little pieces on the different gods. Now these are the, the ten gods as they are worshipped on the island of Harn. Some of these gods are pretty uncommonly worshipped outside of Harn. Ilvir, for example, is alleged to actually live on Harn in the pit of Araka Kalai, where he creates bizarre creatures and sends them out into the world for reasons unknown to man. Um, like getting into the individual gods. Uh, the god Siem is the god of the elves and dwarves, and uh, it, he is also not commonly worshipped off of Harn. Um, and Seriyin actually is, in a sense, sort of the most specialized god, because he's basically the god of Vikings. Um, it's a little more complicated than that, of course, uh, but he is predominantly and overwhelmingly worshipped by Avinians. Now, there are Avinians all over the world, so it's not rare to see a, a follower of Seriyin but um, but they pretty pretty much his worshippers are just Avinians. 
uh, we talk about the churches. So, uh, as I mentioned, I think in the last video, there are different clerical and fighting orders dedicated to the gods. And these are actually really interestingly developed. And there's, of course, rivalries and, and war, actual wars that have broken out between these orders. So this is talked about. We have a little thing on canon law, which can be pretty important. Uh, here's a big history section. Uh, I am certainly not, at this time, going to do a page-by-page -page or paragraph-by-paragraph -paragraph comparison between the history here and the history in the old version, uh, but basically all the highlights should be here. Uh, what I'm not sure I mentioned is that there is a calendar system in Harn, and you can get an actual calendar for it. Uh, the, the numbering of years is done according to the Tuzin Reckoning. And another interesting thing about the way Harn has been developed is that it is the all the materials uh, state that it is the year 720, Who's in Reckoning. None of the materials. There's all kinds of story and adventure and campaign seeds all over this material, uh, but none of the material goes past that date. So there is no meta plot for your personal stuff to get uh, to fall foul of. Uh, Karani Empire, the Theocracy of Tekos. As you can see, the Karani Empire at one point occupied most of Western Harn. Uh, it fell apart, and uh, the three kingdoms of Kande, Rathim, and the Thardic Republic uh, eventually arose there. Uh, quite a bit on um, history here. It doesn't look like much has been left out, if anything. And there's some pictures. Here's Vertlid, the seventh king of Kibisa, uh, who's an interesting individual. So we have... Here is... Let's see what I missed. Okay, so here's the kind of current what's currently going on type of stuff in the epilogue. Um, and here we have an overall timeline, which I'm, it's nice to have. Um, so uh, here we have the birth tables. Um, we have, uh, you can determine the nearest settlement from where you were born here. Um, we, we used to do this when we were running Harn and Rollmaster. Um, in some of the other materials, there's substantially more information to use to uh, determine the status of your uh, origin. Um, here's the timekeeping system again. It's a one-page thing and weather generation system. This is also a one-page thing, but it's actually really, I think, elegant and works really well in practice. Um, so that is it. Uh, so here is the Harn World Master Module. Again, this is the current version, so this thing is 58 pages. Um, on quite nice paper if you get the printed version, but like I said, it is available in PDF, and I suspect that most people, if you end up accumulating a lot of Harn stuff, you're probably going to find that these binders will um, burst. So um, what I have tended to do is to kind of take it apart, organize it the way I want, put it on my own binders, and make my own little title cards and stuff. Uh, but neat product, so it's, it's neat to have a look at this, um, just in the interests of full disclosure. Uh, this copy, but not the other thing, uh, was provided to me courtesy of Columbia Games. So thanks, Columbia Games and Grant, for uh, for doing that. Um, I'm I'm happy to uh, to show this off. This is a like I said in the previous video. This is a setting and materials that I've had a lot of affection for uh, for quite a long time now, and I'm looking forward to doing more Harn videos. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this one. Thanks, and I will see you again soon.